Hey, good morning, guys. Well, I was uh, off to a late start this morning. Um, I uh, was talking to uh, my daughter, who had a baby girl yesterday. So, uh, anyway, I'm a grandfather for the fourth time, and it's all very exciting. And uh, so, anyway, I'm uh, back into uh, the shop and uh, doing things. Um, uh, like I said before, things crop up. And uh, what we got going on here is, I'm going to do a spin thing here, and uh, you can see the batteries in the back. Well, they would not go in that orientation end to end at the back because we were about half an inch, three eighths of an inch short. So what I'm going to do, uh, there's the other side as you can see, I've taken it off, I've made measurements, and what I'm going to do is when I um, took the, these, these panels off the back of the van, I ended up with these, right? So what I'm doing is I'm gonna take it and here is my, my wood, I'm at the table saw, and I've uh, laid it out, what I have to cut out to give myself uh, three quarters of an inch. So I'm having to dismantle things here just to, get that three quarters of an inch because that orientation of the batteries is much more uh, favorable to the way that uh, we want to set this up. So it, it just gives us uh, considerably more room uh, e even though it's only that little bit. So anyway, uh, that's what I'm into this morning and uh, I'll get that all lined up so that we can start doing the layout of uh, how we want to put this solar for the wires and you know how they're going to bend, where we're going to put bus bars and et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, that's what I'm up to today, so uh, stay tuned. Yeah, I didn't know this uh, saw had this feature until now. Anyway, I'll give you a little spin here and look. And I, I guess what it is, it's for doing um, thin materials. And this fence just drops down. It's kind of cool uh, because I know in the past, whenever I've uh, tried to do that, you know, th th this has a tendency to want to drop and get underneath and, uh, you know, not butt up. So, uh, again, I'm impressed with this saw. And that's why they have those big buttons on the uh, saw. Those uh, the red buttons is uh, in this situation. I use my uh, my knee to stop uh, the motor running so that I can control the wood or whatever I'm cutting. So basically, when I put it back, I will attach this to the back side of this. There is the piece that I put in. I'm uh, just test fanning it. It's not permanent yet. But as you can see, if I take these batteries and I try to put them end to end up against the uh, plywood, uh, where are we here? <laughs> they just won't fit because there are tabs, pull down tabs. If you can see right there. There's hold down tabs and they uh, they hit each other. So by putting it down here and putting that relief, there we go. Lots of room. I get that instead of that. So that's what three quarters of an inch does for you. Gives you a totally different option. So now these will be slid back into this position. Okay, so here is where everything is going. As you can see, the batteries are at the back, and we've got uh, uh, the negative bus bar there, and uh, positive or yeah, the live components going in there. 
Uh, here is going to be, uh, well, yeah, DC to DC. And the solar charge controller is going to be at an angle in this area so that we can put the uh, inverter in here because it's massive. Um, yeah, it, it's just a, an exercise in uh, shoehorning it in, MacGyvering, and for anybody who's got a ProMaster, a little tip here. Because we had to uh, find a, um, uh, an ignition circuit for this um, DC to DC uh, battery charger, we went into this tail light. And it just so happens there is a chassis ground in there uh, that is a welded ground. And uh, we simply uh, took the nuts off and uh, added to it. So uh, it's a factory ground that's uh, in, the, in the build that uh, you don't have to go and look for somewhere to uh, grind off the finishes and you know, make sure you got a positive ground. Uh, a positive ground, is there such a thing? Uh, you know, but anyway, uh, anyway yeah, and, and here's uh, that uh, inverter uh, energy that uh, will be going in uh, up above uh, in this area right along here. Okay guys, so here we go. Uh, we'll show you what uh, has been done here. Anyway, uh, in the back, as you can see, uh, there's the Battleborn batteries, and uh, down below that is, uh, you can see the, um, the bus bars. Uh, there's the bus bar for the negative, and uh, yeah, negative ones. And then on the wall over here, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this, I'm kind of all, backwards here I got it on tilt lock anyway all, all the other components on, on the side here uh, shut offs for the power and uh, things like that uh, what I did do also is I put in a fan here just to uh, be able to blow on the back side of the uh, the uh, solar charge controller because uh, it's thinned and uh, I just didn't want to get in too hot I wasn't sure how much air circulation I would get so Anyway, and all the different fusing and uh, all that type of thing, uh, you know, it, it's a system that you have to decide on uh, how complicated you want it, to what extent you want to go, and uh, then build it out from there. Now, I had the luxury of uh, a little bit of time and, uh, uh, you know, uh, resources that made this uh, build uh, what I wanted it to be. So. Anyway, uh, as you can see, there's a shutoff for the solar char or for the solar charge controller because you can't do anything with these uh, until you turn off the solar power. So uh, you know you're not uh, creating a problem for yourself. So anyway, now having done this, you're uh, probably wondering what my views are. Okay, so would I do it again? Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, do did I have would I have to do it again in this manner? No. Okay, so if you recall, my uh, system is uh, 12 volt with 660 watts of solar on the roof, and I have a 40 watt DC to DC charger, 40 watt, 40 amp, yeah, 40 amp DC to DC charger. See how we forget? Anyway, and that uh, takes alternator charging and charges the 400 amp hours of lithium battery that I have, and then to shoot the juice around, I've got a, a 3,000 watt inverter charger. And it's uh, most of the stuff is Renergy, except for the batteries, which are battleborn. So, how did I come to all these conclusions, or how did I build my system? I purchased a book by uh, Will Prouse, and at the time he had uh, apparently the uh, the best book on solar. So that gave me the basics that I needed to kind of have a, a direction on what I wanted to do. Now, when I went to figure it out. The uh, resource that I used was Nate Yarborough at Explorer's Life. Incredible site. He's got all kinds of uh, calculators uh, for uh, sizing your system, wire sizes. Incredible, incredible resource. So I, I would highly recommend uh, going to him because he's really on top of uh, uh, how to put this stuff together. Now, going back to Will Prouse, I, I would... Uh, 
go there also because he likes to tear stuff apart. And so when you're considering getting a certain item, say batteries or whatever, from any given country that you're not sure what you're getting, well, Real Pros, he, he buys this stuff and he tears it apart and he tells you whether it's good on the inside. And uh, it, it, it's really handy because who would normally do that? So I use those two resources. Now, since then, what has uh, developed is uh, solar suitcases and things of that nature. And at the time, I didn't have them available to me because it was just starting and uh, there was a, a little bit of noise about them, but uh, the technology wasn't there yet. On a go forward basis, I think that I would suggest that in my case, I would have put solar on and brought it in. Then it allows you to do all the uh, walls on the inside, your ceiling and all that type of thing and properly insulate it because I put 800 feet of wire in this. And what that does is it creates a block to be able to insulate because you're always trying to go in and around wires. And the danger is that if you don't uh, put the wires in properly, they could, in theory, rub, short out, and now you've lost that circuit, or I don't know if it could uh, potentially create a fire. So I would do it again by building the inside getting a solar suitcase, you plunk it in, you create wire chases on either side so that you can just get power to where you need it short term because as you build, you're gonna figure out how you wanna live in this thing. And that allows you to take that solar suitcase and move it. As long as you have the ability that you leave enough room to go from the solar to anywhere in the van, you have that flexibility. So it's very, very helpful in that way. Now, subsequent to that, what has happened is, uh, like I've got the ProMaster, they're coming out electric. Amazon, major company, they have uh, invested in a company, a company, company, company. I gotta check my sheet here because this is new. Uh, Stellantis. Now it, it's a, a Fiat uh, Chrysler collaboration in Europe and, and they're building these vans out electric for Amazon. And Amazon has also uh, gone to Rivian. They have 20% share in Rivian. So you, you can see where the industry is changing and they've got 200,000 vans coming out uh, through uh, Rivian and they're actually test driving them right now. So all through Ford, uh, Hyundai, they're all doing it. So what that's gonna mean for us is more access to products and battery banks and potentially in the future, you might not need solar uh, because uh, we might have access to different charge uh, stations that would top off our batteries, uh, you know, because they're going to have to have them uh, no, no different than Tesla in different locations so they can keep their fleet moving. So anyway, uh, lots is going on and hopefully uh, we can take advantage of some of that technology because there's a major shift. And, and I, I laugh because I equate it to... Uh, uh, the, the same as the host, horseless carriage when that first came out and there was a lot of controversy and the change was massive and it's no different now because 10, 12 years ago we were in the same boat where we didn't think we would be going to electric vehicles. Who would have thought? You know, it, it, it's crazy but a lot of opportunity and it allows us to uh, uh, build maybe differently and have access to things that were previously it, it's developing. It, it, it's, it's incredible. So anyway, I hope that... Uh, you know, you have a good build and uh, the main thing is just build it, get out there, have fun and uh, in the future you'll figure it out and uh, you know, as long as you stay warm and hydrated, you'll be okay. So anyway, you guys take care and uh, we'll talk to you later. See ya.